Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where we talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Prodigal Son. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. But first and foremost, I think it's ironic that Vivian's the one that ended up having the nightmare and not uh, Malcolm. Because Vivian ended up having that nightmare of her and a surgeon working together, and it's like, oh. And it also shows her just how smitten she is, but uh, that also surprised me that she ended up being like, yeah, she's smitten by him, but it wasn't a situation where she was, like, completely in love with him, like, oh, I'm willing to do whatever for you and with you. I mean, maybe given the opportunity, she could have, like, developed into that. I don't know. But it's just ironic that, like, she's having this nightmare about her and the surgeon work, working on her. Because it's like, oh, we're partners. You're the great, you know, like, I'm by your side through all this. Yada, 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 yada. It's like, under different circumstances, it'd be something kind of romantic. But with the context of what we know about what the story is, you know, it, it takes away some of the romanticism in, it, in, a, in a twisted way. But like I said, Malcolm didn't really have a nightmare because his mom, you know, Jessica stumbled upon him being like, oh. She's like, how you were? I why didn't I hear you? Like you, you weren't screaming. He's like, I don't always scream. And she's like, don't you? You know. So obviously she's going through some stuff of like, oh, here's some stuff I promised never to look at again because it was related to your father. But I'm doing it because I've decided to go forward with this book. But then she finds a key, a mysterious key that's like, what does this go to? But it's like it can't it go to a it has to go to like a bank or something. But it's like. I'm the one who handled all the finances, so why would your dad have anything like this? So, she's off investigating that. Obviously, Malcolm uh, gets involved in a new case, which I love the whole situation of like, hey, Gil's car gets fixed, which she, which she's immediately like, you stay away from. It's like, every time there's a Whitley nearby, I just got her custom, like, remade and everything again, so it's like, I don't want a Whitley anywhere near my car. But then, like, JT being like, oh, what about a Tormel? And it's just kind of like, you know, so... But this case involves a lady being murdered. It seemed like it was, you know, a crime of passion. And there was an anonymous tip about the case. And it turns out that's the uh, nearby neighbor, Gerald, who is this chess master, chess grandmaster, who basically disappeared from the world because it turns out he's uh, agoraphobic and he's basically locked himself away for the past 20 plus years. Which I think, to a certain extent, maybe that's why Malcolm was able to talk to him. Because Malcolm's kind of done a very similar thing. He's kind of, especially more recently, he's kind of locked himself away from people. Just like Gerald's kind of locked himself away from the world. He's very good at, he's kind of like been surveying like people. Like everyone like around him. He knows people's routines and their relationships and stuff like that. Because like basically, for him, like it's still like, what, 90 something in his place. So for him, it's like the only attachment to the world he has is the outside world but not a situation where it's like oh he's participating in it it's just that he's watching it and that's how he stumbled across his neighbor because he was kind of like he's like oh i remember uh i you know it's like oh her boyfriend who'd come at out hours or whatever the fact is that um lorley um he even like because of his chest mind he remembers all the details so he remembered details about what her boyfriend looked like, even what make and model car he used, drove, even the um, license plate and everything. But immediately there is this like, because he's very good at reading people, he does read the whole Danny and um, Malcolm situation. He doesn't know the ins and outs of it, but he knows that there's something there, which Malcolm talks about it later on of like, yeah, uh, Danny doesn't know how he feels and he's got to keep it that way because... He's like, it's kind of more dangerous for her to kind of be... He doesn't want her too close. Because now even... Because even Jessica was like, yeah, what about you and Danny? And he's like, well, the whole covering up a murder thing kind of puts a little bit of a damper on that. So his mom didn't push too much on it, but... You know, because she was kind of like, oh, you actually look refreshed. Even Gil was talking about that because he's kind of essentially going cold turkey. As she said, it's like, oh, you're, well, as his mom puts it, it's like, you're not cutting nicotine out of your, you're literally cutting out a, uh, a malignant cancer, you know, um, which I'm sure Malcolm would, I mean, uh, I'm sure Martin would appreciate being referred to as a malignant cancer that needed to be cut out. Because it was like, for her, it's like, hey, you have a fresh opportunity. It's like, oh, you can even leave all this silly murder stuff behind. And it's like, well, a mother can dream at the very least, you know. But um, everyone else is saying, like, how oh, it's actually kind of working for him. It's actually interesting, too, because it actually kind of plays into the, the story of, like, a little between Danny and Malcolm. Because it's like, because Malcolm's talking about the fact is the reason why Gerald's kind of got the, like, gorophobia. It had to be some, like, trauma. They didn't really go into it too much on why 
he was gorephobic. Like, what triggered that? I don't, I don't, and, and not unless I missed it, I don't think they really went over why that was, but I thought it was interesting, though. Because Malcolm's saying that Gerald's actually the perfect witness because of his, the way his mind works, but it's also like, right, he doesn't get out, so it doesn't make him the perfect witness and stuff like that. Once again, it's like, the conversation was kind of almost like a giant metaphor for like Malcolm, like I said, just kind of cutting himself off from the world. Like it was, it was like a subtext in the conversation, even though it never really became overt. It was kind of, you know, like I said, subtext to it. Because at first it seems like maybe Gerald was kind of lying about Laura Lee because it's like, it turns out like Laura Lee had confronted him like a month ago because like they ended up tracking down her boyfriend. He's got these scars and stuff like that. Don't wonder if it was like a domestic situation. But he's like, yeah, Laura Lee confronted him and Malcolm confronted Gerald about it. And obviously they're having their chess match and everything. But Gerald talks about the fact is that he liked Laura because she, Laura Lee, like, she actually brought him back to the world. She actually would get him groceries and stuff like that. Notice, like, he needed stuff. So, like, there was a connection there. Like, she was kind of his bridge back to the world. So, for him, it's like, he couldn't, she was doing so much for him. But for him, it's like, I couldn't really do much for her when she needed me most, you know? And, you know, because, you know. But then we find out that her boyfriend has a twin brother. It turns out they were actually... Uh, did they say cartel? Like, they, I think it was like a some cartel they were actually connected with. And her boyfriend left some years ago. That's where the scars on his neck is from, like, him erasing his gang tattoos. But this is all about his twin tracking him down all these years later. But Laura Lee wouldn't give him up, so that's why he, um, he ended up killing her the way he did. It was why it became, like, the crime of passion that it was. But, um... Eventually... Said twin ended up catching, uh, what was his, I think Felix ended up catching up with his twin, nearly beating him to death, but knew there was a witness left, Gerald, so he ends up going after Gerald and Malcolm, but it's the thing of like, right, Gerald is agoraphobic, so now he's not going to want to leave his house, but Malcolm is kind of saying it in a chess move of like, yeah, you don't really have much of a choice, like, you know, the job point is to get the pawn across the board, you know? So, and I think it's, and I think that's kind of what they're going for with that whole sequence too, I thought was really interesting. It's like, because it's Gerald's house, he's lived there for the past 20 years. Like, he's almost like, all right, you know, wait. It's like, I know my house in and out. So like, okay, he's going out, let's move. Like he knew exactly when and what to get him and Malcolm to stop moving. But then Malcolm says like, you know, the fact of the matter is this isn't a uh, game anymore. You got to get out. Like, you know, it's like, you know, what's our move? And it's like, run. And they both get outside. And luckily, um, Danny shows up and hits Felix with the car, which is like, I'm sure Gil is going to bring that up. It's like, okay, now it's going to be a situation where none of them are allowed anywhere near his car. Not a Whitley, not JT, not even um, Danny, you know? So I'm sure that's, I think that's kind of the whole point of it, too. Doesn't look like it got too damaged, but I'm, still, I'm sure there's probably going to be some stuff that needs to kind of be buffed out of that, so... It's interesting that while all this is going down, like, obviously, Martin is calling up Malcolm, trying to talk to him. It's like, hey, son, I got to talk to you today. But because at the same time, Mar uh, Malcolm is going cold turkey, cutting his dad out of his life. It's like, I don't need you in my head, especially considering he had his dad in his head last episode with the whole, like, oh, tell Danny thing. And it just it was becoming a little too much. So even more reason to cut his dad out because it's like. You know, you've been too ingrained and too much of a part of my life recently. I need to kind of cut you out, you know, to kind of figure things out, you know. Um, which even Martin's kind of like, okay, I respect the whole, like, you want to cleanse for me. Once again, kind of a little bit of an insult that, like, you have to be kind of cleansed of me a little bit. But, hey, I respect it. But he's trying to, like, contact, like, Malcolm the entire episode. He's only able to talk to Malcolm the one time. And so... Because Friar Pete and them are about to make their move. It's like, Martin was saying, like, give me till tomorrow. And they're like, fine, we'll move. But with or without Martin, we're making our move tomorrow. So, um, home dude who, uh, you know, him and his the imaginary person in his head, Willie, ended up talking to um, Vivian about, like, right, the good doctor being the one that, like, um, he's the head of the serpent. Because it's like, Friar Pete and other dude are, like, up to something and... Um, Vivian could kind of tell because it's like, oh, these are your friends, right? It's like, no, they're not my friends. This is all about the good doctor and how he's the head of the snakes and stuff like that. So she ends up following Friar Pete. He's doing the whole thing with the rats. And she was going to 
like after she kicked the shit out of him, she was going to report him. But then it was like, oh, if you do, I'm going to report you and Martin. It's like, oh, I know you two are canoodling. And the fact is that like, oh, not only will he get thrown in a hole, but you'll lose your job. I'm curious which one of those factors affected her most. Was it, you know, were they both equal or was it more? I feel like it's probably more of a 60, 40, 60 in the sense of I'm going to lose my job. It's kind of all I have, but 40% because like she was, she's really had fallen for Martin. Um, so she actually lets him know. And it's like, he's like, she's like, how are you so calm about it? It's like, don't worry. I'm a handle it, which she was almost like, what do you mean by that? And you can only assume it's a situation of, oh, I'm a murder to dude. But like, it's the thing of, he's like, oh, don't worry about it. You, he's like, oh, you think I'm good with just my hands cuff? Like, uh, you you like what I've been able to do with my hands cuff? Like, wait till I get these off. And, and she's like, oh, like, tempting, but I'm not going to like uncuff you. But it's like, part of me was like, but he's also like implying like he'd kill Friar Pete, you know, for her sake. I don't know if that was just kind of to lead her on, but I guess she was, uh, I guess she didn't think, Maybe she didn't want to, like, know what he meant because she didn't press too much. But it sounded like it was like, oh, I'm going to kill Fire Pre uh, Pete. You know, that way it kind of gets rid of both of our issues. And I think she was okay with that because it's like, ah, it's a win-win-win. We get rid of that. I get to stay here, keep doing my job because I also get to stay close to you. And we're kindling this new relationship. Really interesting when Jessica walks in at that moment, too. And it's like, oh, it's like, yeah, this is Jessica, my wife, ex wife and it's like the fact is you have to explain that to your girlfriend it's like that's kind of an interest you know and so it's just kind of like a oh hey this awkward like tension that's there that jessica's not really aware of but then like you know v vivian leaves and jessica's like okay what's this key about which he's like very dodgy about and she's like no like you wouldn't be avoiding it as much if it wasn't something significant but also on top of all of that is the situation of She's like, you're, you're too cheerful. Like, what's up with that? He's like, why? He's like, what would I have anything? What would I be up to? I'm just a rat in a cage. He's like, yeah, I've been having a pretty busy day, Jessica. So, you know, it's like, oh, yeah. Like, so see yourself out. Basically, Friar Pete ended up, like, poisoning everyone. The whole point was, like, to cause a commotion so they could slip away. And Vivian, being so trusting now and having fallen for Martin's charm, ended up releasing him because it's like, okay, you helped me deal with this. But then he slips away, which for Vivian, it was like, no, 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 no. Like, and that's what surprised me because I thought she would have been a little bit more okay. Maybe, once again, maybe given enough time, it might have been a situation where she would have been happy to help him escape. But it's also a thing of she actually enjoyed their circumstances because this way, like, she is a bit of a control freak and she likes having control over uh, Martin. But it's also like what they had, she really enjoyed too. Once again, that nightmare kind of coming true of like, yeah, um, you and Martin working together on you and, you know, he kind of flipped the script on you and he was like, honestly, I am sorry, but he's like, cause he does care for her, but it's like family comes first. And it's like, you know, for him, he's like, I need to get out of here, you know? And so uh, Jessica ended up figuring it out when she sees the rats and ended up figuring out what Martin was up to calls up Gil. Um, and I love that. It's like that dude's like, hey, you're the surgeon's wife. And she's like, oh, you don't like Martin? Don't worry. I, we're actually, I don't like him either. And it's like, okay. And it's like, he's going to get back at Martin by killing her. And, and he's like, oh, well, what are you going to do? And she stabs him in the head, or rather his eardrum with her heel. Luckily, Gil and them show up. But it's like, everything's going to be okay. And she's like, no one's going to be okay and safe if Martin Whitley is free. And he manages to escape. But before he did that, he left a message for Malcolm. And it's still unclear, like, what he... I guess for him, it's like, I'm saving my family. Like, I'm not the same man that I was. I have... Well, the well, he did attempt to murder someone. It just uh, ended up helping the dude. So, he can't say that he's completely changed because it was not too long ago. Let's not forget, it was like literally earlier this season, he tried to murder his cellmate, but ended up... Well, his roommate, and it ultimately ended up helping the dude. So, if, like, if it hadn't helped in that regard, he would have been still the serial killer that he is. But he's trying to suggest, like, no, I've changed, my boy. Fact of the matter is, I'm just trying to protect my family. Um, ho I hope you find me. What M Martin's whole deal is, like, if we were still dealing with the Endicott stuff, sure. But maybe this has to deal with... Because this was also, like, my thought of, like... When it was all said and done, he was going to go on the run with Vivian if he didn't end up killing her. That was kind of like my wild theory. And that may, may be, basically he ended up going on the run with um, Ainsley. Still a possibility, but I'm like, but it's a possibility. But now I'm seeing like, oh, it's less likely now that he's on the run with Home Dude and Friar Pete. So 
I guess they're going to be doing their terrible thing and he's going to try and avoid that because I think for him it's like, no, 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 I need to be a better man for my family. I'm going to be, I am a better person. I'm just going to be there for my family. I just need to find a like roundabout way to get to them because if I confront them now, like, well, Jessica's going to want to turn me in. Ansley might not considering like the shift she's going through right now. She might even kind of keep him headed. I don't know. I'm so curious to see where this goes because it's going in a somewhat direction. I figured it would, but it's just like, I don't know for sure like how this could possibly like there's a lot of ways this could ultimately end up playing out and so i'm just not sure what the end result is what his end game is because it's like you're leaving for your getting out for your family's sake it's like well the whole shtick is like he's in his mind is like oh my family needs me so it's that but he almost makes it seem like there's something else too i'd assume it had something to do with that key jessica found like he wasn't planning on her finding that, but I'm sure, like, in some shape or form, that's got to tie in, too, because he did just get a little cagey moment that he came up, like, oh, it, it doesn't mean anything. Let me see it. And she's like, no. So it's like, there's something to that. Uh, maybe some buried secrets, you know, because uh, it can't just be money or trophies connected to his merch. I, I mean, to be fair, there's a whole Endicott secret that was kept for so damn long. You know, so who knows what other secrets he was keeping as a surgeon and or just as Martin Whitley in general, like that needs to kind of be tapped into. But obviously we see the end, which is sad because Gerald, you know, obviously was kind of pointing uh, Malcolm towards like saying something to Danny. And in this moment, like everything got flipped upside down. So where this is all going to take is going to be very interesting because uh, I avoided the preview. So I have no idea like what's kind of awaiting us as this like storyline continues. Um, I mean, what is it? What does this mean for the Whitley family as a whole now that he's on the loose and everything? I'm sure like news reporters and everything, which is definitely going to be interesting. Like, cause a lot of people are going to be like, Whit Whitley's, what are you going to do now that you're, you know, it's like, that's going to put them in the spotlight in a very negative light. It's probably going to interfere with Mark. Well, Malcolm doing any cases. Well, for one, just because his mind's going to be distracted, but it's also, it's like, yeah, with your dad out there, we kind of need you focused on other stuff. Maybe we just, or we can, at the very least can't have you working on cases right now. Um, I mean, the reason why I was also bringing up reporters is like, well, let's not forget Ainsley. Like, she might try and get the scoop on this circumstance as well. You know, try and be like, well, it's my story, both literally and figuratively. Figuratively in the sense of, well, because it's literally my story, it should be me that ends up breaking it. We'll, we'll see how things ultimately end up playing out in the next episode. I'm really curious to see where all this takes us. Also, where things go with Vivian now that she's been betrayed, but eventually it's probably going to come back about like, yeah, so you and Martin were super close, and it's like, that's probably going to end with her getting fired, so it's all going to come blowing up in her face, but not unless there's going to be something that ends up happening like now that Martin's free, and then eventually maybe they can rekindle their relationship because it's like hey i'm sorry i did that to you but this is how i got out now we can be a thing well because once again it's like i'm here for my family but hey i mean because it's a thing of like he's being there more so for his kids not jessica it's hard to say whether he's actually moved on or not when it comes to Jessica, or is he still hoping? No, because he still has that notion of wanting to be with Jessica, because that came up earlier in the season, like that fantasy he had of like, yeah, until Mal Malcolm came and ruined it, because Malcolm continues to ruin everything for him. It's like, I love you, my boy, but you, you screw over everything I have planned, and just, you know, when he was trying to talk to Malcolm earlier in the episode, Mal like Malcolm ignoring him just frustrated him to no end, as always, but it's just like, I think there is a part of him that hopes to pick things up with Jessica, too, even though he knows there's a her and Gil situation. So that's, it's, it's going to be interesting how this ultimately all ends up playing out, like I said. We'll have to wait and see. But really, that's all I'm going to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, look like to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.